was right over there on my deck. Juno, Alaska resident Steve Bradford shows us what's left of his neighbor's home. Here it is just days earlier as it was ripped from its foundation. By raging floodwaters melting off of Alaska's famed Mendenhall Glacier. The cause of the flooding, an extreme heat wave that caused so much ice to melt in such a short period of time, it caused what's known as a glacial outburst flood. Floodwaters overwhelming the Mendenhall River below the glacier, sweeping away the home. The family was out of the country when it happened. Their neighbors across the river, Gregory and Donica Giroux, watched in horror as the home and others around it were ripped from their foundations along with majestic century-old trees uprooted from the landscape. I think it's Mother Nature doing what she wants to do. We don't have a damn control. Dr. Aaron Hood, an environmental scientist here in Juneau at the University of Alaska Southeast, studies glacier melting and says the rapid melting of the Mendenhall Glacier melting that he refers to as glacier retreat is all the proof we need he says that glaciers around the world are retreating at an accelerated rate from climate change there's no question that it's contributing to the glacier retreat that we're seeing it's enhancing rates of glacier retreat we're just sort of turbocharging the process of glacier retreat by warming the atmosphere other examples of climate change in alaska are warming ocean waters impacting fishing here, according to Dr. Bob Foy and Dr. Robert Suryan, noted scientists with the U.S. government's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, here at NOAA's Alaska Fisheries Science Center outside of Juneau. They say rising ocean temperatures are having a dire impact on Alaska's fisheries that millions of consumers depend on around the world. What we're seeing right now is a number of extreme events that had major impacts on the entire ecosystem that completely changed some of the larger fishery stocks. Fishery stocks that include Alaska's lucrative commercial food fish, pollock, which is like cod that people around the world rely on every year. A $2 billion a year industry now threatened because of climate change and warming ocean waters that are making it increasingly more difficult to track pollock populations or fisheries, leading to inconsistent hauls of pollock on commercial fishing boats and inconsistent sales and revenue and earnings for fishermen. These inconsistencies are referred to as variability and the increasing rate of variability, says Foy, keeps going higher and higher. Year-to-year -year variability is at its highest than we've ever seen before. So what does this mean? Why is this concerning? As climate continues to change, we're gonna to continue to see that variability. It means that our um, ability to predict those commercial fisheries, it means our ability to um, make sure that they're sustainable for fishermen who have livelihoods, for communities that are dependent on the economics as well as the food from a food security perspective, becomes much more difficult and much more variable. So the question is how much of this is due to climate change? And what we know from many of the events, especially the extreme heat events that we've seen in the past a handful of years, that they're absolutely caused by climate change, that they're absolutely could not have occurred without this background increase in, in temperature uh, that we would not have had without climate change. Foy's colleague here at NOAA, Dr. Robert Suryan, has been following several long-term ocean monitoring studies that prove an irrefutable pattern of climate change. One study going back 30 years was actually initiated to study the impact of the Exxon Valdez oil spill on ocean life here back in 1989. Scientists keeping the study going till this day because it's become such an invaluable tool to measure changes in the ocean over time from climate change. And how rising water temperatures, for example, during a recent heat wave in the region has been impacting marine mammals. There's a wide variety of marine mammals that um, 
did not do well during the heat wave. We saw a major uh, population declines for, for example, humpback whales and gray whales. Also concerning, says Suryan, is the disappearing numbers of capelin. That is normally an important food fish for larger prey fish and for birds in the region. Capelin are very temperature sensitive and they tend to just um, disappear during warm periods. Toxic algal blooms are now occurring in Alaska with more frequency from unusually warm water temperatures, poisoning shellfish that native Alaskans here rely on for food, says Ray Paddock, environmental program manager for the Tlingit Haida tribes of Alaska. And harmful algal blooms essentially affect uh, shellfish, which our people depend on. And so we can't harvest shellfish the way we used to in the past um, due to not essentially not knowing when it's safe to. And we started seeing an increase of people getting sick or possibly dying from uh, harmful algal blooms. So you'll start seeing everything from your tingling in your lips, your fingertips, um, uh, essentially start to go numb and it can kill you or paralyze you. Yeah, he'll play. He likes you. <laughs> Longtime Alaska resident Jim Powell is an assistant research professor at University of Alaska Southeast. Who says this landslide just down the street from his home is another sign of climate change. During the last few years, we're seeing landslides. That's the most uh, demonstrative thing that you see. Oh my gosh! So that's new, that's new on the landscape. Powell says there is a positive development happening concerning climate change. People, he says, are beginning to adapt to it and are helping reduce greenhouse gases from fossil fuels by driving electric vehicles, for example, as he does. He says the vehicle seemed expensive at first when he bought it, but says that because he no longer needs gas, it will save him money in the long run. The good news is, when you do something about climate change, it usually has an economic effect, a positive economic effect. For example, why did I get my electric car? It's because I penciled out that in eight years my car would pay for itself, for example. So you're saving money and you're cutting down greenhouse gases. That makes sense. Powell says even cruise ships visiting Juneau now plug in to electric power stations when they dock here, reducing emissions like these when they burn fossil fuels at sea. We had the first plug-in cruise ship. We now have cruise ships that can come in at least one dock to provide power for that whole big ship that's got, you know, two to 4,000 people in it and even more. It's like a little city. So we're plugging in a whole city. So that's cut down the air pollution. The main point is to really to control our carbon. Powell believes the majority of people around the world are now aware of climate change and realizing that we're all in a period of learning to adapt to climate change and to mitigate its impact. I hope and I think we have turned the, the, the corner on climate change in the sense that people realize that the climate is changing through the wildfires and through the flooding and all the other surprises that are happening now. Disastrous surprises as mentioned like the homes taken out from the most recent glacial outburst flood at the Mendenhall Glacier. However, adapting to climate change related flooding is not going so well for insurance companies that Powell says haven't yet learned how to categorize coverage of an event like this. In other words, there is no climate change coverage per se anywhere, he says, that covers what happened to residents here. We actually interviewed uh, the head of insurance for the state of Alaska on, on what's happening as far as insurance rates and what are they going to do. They're just figuring it out because insurance rates all over are increasing because of the uh, really erratic weather that we're having. The only thing that's certain about climate change is we're going to see surprises. We're going to have things happening that have never happened before. Resident Steve Bradford's condo, which is next to the house that went into the river, luckily was spared any damage, 
because it was further away from the riverbank. But he says those who lost their homes along the river or saw their homes damaged don't have climate change insurance because, again, nothing like that climate change insurance even exists. They say they could have signed up for what's called earth movement insurance for when the earth moves, but nobody here had that because they never thought the earth would move or that an earthquake might even roll through here. The bad thing about this whole disaster is nobody has any insurance to cover this. All of our insurances all up and down this river exclude earth movement, and we had massive earth movement. How many times are you ever going to see earth movement like this? I hope never again. But, sh but in, in, in a perfect world, shouldn't everybody here have the confidence that when you buy insurance, it should cover something like this? Well, nobody reads the fine print. I mean, I had to get our policy and look at it uh, to, the, to verify that earth movement was excluded. I was, you know, people said it, but it's like, really? What is earth movement? So it was very well defined in our policy, unfortunately. At the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center is a rather terrifying time-lapse image showing just how fast the glacier has been melting and receding over just the last 10 years alone. And there's only one place for the melting glacier water to go, downriver to all these homes. This recent flood has forced Gregory and Donica Giroux and other residents along the riverbed to have hundreds of tons of boulders laid down to provide armor against erosion from the next flood, they say, that comes through here. And they say their insurance doesn't pay for this protective measure either each homeowner on average having to pay $100,000 to drop enough boulders down to protect their riverfront properties. Do you think it'll happen again? I know it will. It's gonna happen again. We're fortunate that nobody was killed or injured along this, this event and hope that everybody can move forward. It remains unclear if the world can adapt fast enough to keep up with climate change.